That's lecture two. Oops, that's not. Oh dear. The, the um. The teleprompter went straight to the end. It's like at a thousand words a minute. I can't speak that quick. Right, here we go again. Okay. So this is lecture two, part one. Uh, in this video, we start off the process of planning and designing a qualitative research project. Woo! Shut up and sit down. So this is what we'll get done in this lecture. We will define research design in a qualitative context. We'll learn how to look for research topics that are suitable for psychology students. We'll understand the importance of developing research questions that are relevant and original. And we'll know how to assess relevance and originality. We'll know the questions to ask to check the implications of our topic, research topic and questions. We'll identify the parameters researchers use to plan for sample size in qualitative research. We will list free sampling methods used in qualitative psychology. We'll know the key ethical requirements of all research and the particular ethical challenges for qualitative research. We'll identify discriminating practices in research language, sampling and demographic information. Yes, that's a lot. So you guessed it, we're going to split up this lecture into a number of parts so they're not too long. Um, lecture, lecture one, we had three parts, but they were quite long. Yeah? They were like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I think perhaps that's too long. I'm interested in your feedback on that. But um, for this lecture, well, certainly this part, I'm going to shrink it down so it's a nice bite-sized chunk rather than a, a big chunk that you might choke on. Okay, but also we're going to have a number of more than three parts to this lecture because we have a lot of material to get through. There's a lot of stuff here in relation to research design and because there's a lot of stuff we're going to spend a couple of weeks on it. So we're going to be working on this over weeks three and week four. So let's crack on. What do we mean by research design? Well it's more than just having a question and a method of data collection. It's the entire blueprint for your research project. It's a thing that allows you to cost out your project, to determine if it's feasible. Do you have the time? Do you have the money? And do you have the other resources you need to do it? But the design also allows you to see if your project has coherence. Does everything fit within our research design principles? So, is the data analysis appropriate to the research question? Is the method of data collection going to give us data that's suitable for that analysis? And so on. Now, on pages 43 and 44 of our prescribed text, we get an overview of what a research design is. Here there are five main elements. So we've got the research topic, element one, research topic and questions. This is where we decide what we want to know and why we want to know it. Uh, there has to be a point to what we're doing, you know? Remember, we're, we're usually going to be involving people in our project, so it mustn't be a waste of time for You them. are wasting my time. You can't be wasting people's time. So there has to be a point to us doing our research. Then number two, methodology. For methodology, we're thinking about the assumptions that we have about reality and knowledge, ontology and epistemology, all that stuff we covered in lecture one. And from this, we get a sense of what data we need and how much data we need and how we're going to collect that data. And this is where we get into questions about our data collection. We then need to think about what sort of analysis we're going to undertake. And then we need to think about the ethics of the research project. You know, are there any risks to our participants, to ourselves, to the public? if we actually go ahead with this research. Damn, that's awfully risky. Now, the thing to note here is how important the research question is. If you get that wrong, that wrongness will carry all the way through your project. This is so f***ed <laughs> up on so many levels. It's also the point at which we decide what it is we need to know. You know, when we're formulating our research question, that's where we decide what it is we need to know. You know what we do or do not need to know. Now, if you lose focus on that 
Um, if you lose focus on that when you start developing your research questions, if you lose focus on, on that in your data analysis and in your write-up um, and your use of the literature, um, it's a bit of a disaster. You know, you end up with data that doesn't answer your original research question. You know, you may have drifted away from that original question. Whoa. What was the question again? This can cause all sorts of problems, particularly if someone has funded you to do the research. Uh, but also because when you get permission to do your research, say, through an F by an ethics committee, they've given you permission on the basis that you were going to ask that original research question. So if you depart from that question, you'd lose ethics approval. You'll have to go back to your ethics committee and check they're happy with what you, end, what you have ended up doing. Um, there may be, it's arguable that actually you, you've got to stop what you're doing. You've drifted too far away from the original question that you told the ethics committee that you were going to ask. It's ethics. Okay. Now, if you depart from that question, you're, yeah, you're in trouble. You're in a bit of trouble. So we have to keep, we have to make sure that one, we get the best question our research question, and then everything else links up with that. Every, we stay focused on that, and our interview questions, our data analysis, and our report writing all connect to that original research question. Now, putting a lot of focus on the whole topic of research design, both in the unit, but also as a whole, um, uh, in your assessments, uh, because there's a, it, it's a significant part of assessment free. It's the most heavily weighted assessment that we have on the unit. We're doing this because it's a key skill to acquire if you go on to do an honours degree or if you go into a, prof a profession that requires you to undertake research in some form or another. It's also a very challenging task, so that's why we're going to spend quite a bit of time on it. Research design is what we're focusing in on assessment free. It's um, very much all, it's very much what assessment free is all about. Now let's have a look at that assessment, assessment free. Now it's quite a way off now, if you're watching this in um, teaching week three. Um, it's not till the end of the unit, uh, so we don't have to worry about it at the moment, but it's worth reminding us um, that this assessment is sitting there because what we're doing in assessment one and what we're doing in assessment two all builds towards assessment three. It's all, it's gonna help us. The first two assessments are building up and helping us to do well in assessment three. So in assessment one, I give you a research topic. We all do the same topic. You don't have to choose a topic. I give you a topic and your task is to develop some interview questions. I'll give you a topic and I'll give you the research question and you have to develop your interview questions because you're gonna run some interviews. So that's your task for assessment one. Um, you then run the interview. This is all happening at our residential school. You run the interview, and then you reflect on how well that interview went. Oh yeah, that was, uh, that was a weird interview. <laughs> so yeah, that's assessment one. We do all of that work, or most of that work, during our res residential school, and then you write it up. You could start writing it up during the residential school, but you write it up shortly after. Or submit it shortly after. So you get the chance to learn how to develop your interview questions from a research question. Now assessment two, here's where you decide on your own research topic. And you then learn to use the literature to formulate your research question. Here it's about formulating a research question that's original, makes a contribution to the literature. You know, research that's worth doing. Research that's needed because it's relevant. Um, but you, in this assessment, well, assessment two, you won't then go on to develop your interview questions because you've done that. You've shown that you can do this in assessment one. So assessment three, you then use the topic that you've chosen for assessment two and you build up a research proposal. And that proposal will be where you apply what you will learn from this lecture sequence, the videos that make up lecture two. Now this, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Now, the proposal. 
The proposal you'll write for assessment three won't actually be a full proposal. There'll be two bits that you won't, you would ordinarily have to write for a proposal that you won't have to write for assessment three. The first is methodology, all that stuff we did in lecture one, um, which helps you to make an argument about the methodological approach that you're adopting. Here, there's an expectation in a research proposal, a full research proposal, you, you'll be making your argument about the ontological and epistemological position you're adopting, which then justifies the methodology or explains the methodology that you're using. So you don't do that for our assessment. That's the bit of the proposal we're not going to do. Um, mostly because that's complicated material. And um, it's great if you can get your head around it, but I'm not assessing your ability to get your head around it because it's, it was quite, um, quite big philosophical issues and conceptually abstract issues we dealt with, um, dealt with there. So yeah, chill out. <laughs> if, you, if you don't get that material, it's all right. You don't need it for any of the assessments. But ordinarily in a full proposal, that's where you would need to know about that stuff and how to make an argument for the methodology that you're choosing. The other thing we won't be doing is a full ethics proposal. Um, you ordinarily have to do this for a research proposal, but we won't be doing a full ethics proposal. But I will be asking you to reflect on some of the ethical issues of your proposed research. And we'll be looking at ethics in the last part of this series for lecture two. So that's all for now. If you're watching this in week one, slow down. <laughs> slow down, you're going too quickly. Um, also, it means that part two of lecture two may not be ready for you yet because I haven't done it. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. If you're watching this in week three, nice job. You're working exactly at the pace that I've designed the unit to be taken at. And as long as all has gone well my end, Part two should be there, ready for you to view. Then part three should be there, hopefully, as well. Now, if you're watching this in uh, Teaching Week 12, <laughs> where, where have you been? What, what's, what's happened to you? Where, you, where have you been? Um, you're a bit behind. Uh, yeah, get your skates on, eh? Okay. Um, actually, maybe, yeah, <laughs> if you seriously, this is the first time you've seen this video and it's week 12. Um, yeah, maybe you need to get in touch with me. Because you might be a little bit off track. <laughs> and I'll try and help you get back on track. Okay. So, that's all for this. Um, lecture 2, Part 1. See you in Lecture 2, Part 2. And, uh, yeah, till then. Ta-da! to say something I, uh, my skin complexion keeps changes changing from, oops was that in the shot all the time oh, what an amateur <laughs> am I that much of an amateur anyway is that something else something I wanted to explain oh boy oh boy excuse the dreadful sign coming up I'll just kind of move the mic out of the way that's been sat there all the time All right, well, <laughs> there we go, Set the, setting the bar low, aren't I? <laughs> then the microphone high. Yeah, one thing I wanted to explain, it's kind of related to that, about, um, I'm still learning about making videos. My skin complexion, uh, I can't get my colour correction right, it's all over the place. Partly because uh, I'm colour blind, or partially colour blind. Partially because I'm partially colour blind. But also, um, technologically, still a little inept in terms of how to use the software to get this colour correction done. So, yeah, after time I look as though I'm suffering from heart disease, probably. Yeah, it was the phone. You know, it's all falling apart. So, uh, after time I look as though I'm suffering from heart disease. I'm doing okay, I promise you. I know I'm a bit sweaty, but it's just hot. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Just can't colour correct properly. Um, okay. So, and my air. My air's going all over the place. Plays havoc with the screen screen. The other video, I had like a, a handle. 
my hair was up like this. I had this little carry handle as though someone can come along and pick me up and carry me away. Maybe that would be a good idea. Um, so yeah, maybe I need a haircut along sometime soon too. Anyway, enough of that self-critical, self-hating analysis. Um, I'll sort myself out by next time. See you next time.